But also this morning, and this is page, I don't know, three or four or five, uh, of the Dominion Post this morning. I'm one of those old guys who still reads the newspaper. Here's the headline. Nine out of every ten hateful posts in survey target PM. An online hate tracker found Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern was the target of 93% of toxic posts against seven high-profile politicians and officials with a total of 5,439 abusive messages. Well, that sounds interesting. It's a hot headline. So I wanted to find out more about it. So what we did was we rang the person involved in this study, and his name's Chris Wilson. He is a senior lecturer in politics and international relations at Auckland University, and he's been good enough to take some time out of his morning and join us now. Uh, Chris, welcome uh, to, to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. All right, tell us about the methodology of this online hate tracker. Right, well, it's um, a pipeline that collects data from the websites that you may have seen. With the, for the study, we've focused on the darkest websites, um, Gab, 4chan, Reddit, a number of Telegram channels. We collected data from 2019 to 2022. Um, out of those posts, we've searched for... Hang on, hang on, but before we go any, any, any further. So when the headline says, so you are actually looking for the worst, most extreme websites, that's where you're getting this information from? Yep, that's right. Okay, is this part of the disinformation project? No. Okay, all right. Not, so, yeah, we're not connected. Okay, so who funds this research? Um, this research is largely unfunded with okay. a number of um, university funding. Okay, university funding is a part of a government project or a government department project of any type? No. Okay, that's cool. Just wanted to clear that up. All right, so nine out of so now we're at nine out of every ten hateful posts in surveys of the most extreme parts of the internet. That's right, yep. Okay, good. Okay. So this is so we're talking about five thousand, was it four hundred and thirty nine posts in the period twenty nineteen to twenty twenty two. So we collected data from 2019 to 2022. Um, I wanted to get, so I, was, I just wanted to inject some data into this discussion about mm. does misogyny drive, what, what's happened here, does it drive, do women, high profile women face more abuse than males? Um, so what I did was included the Prime Minister in, in our search along with six other high profile figures from the yeah. left and the right, uh, political parties on the left and the right, um, who were focused, some who were involved at the at the forefront of the the fight against COVID, others who weren't. Um, so just trying to get a, a range of different um, forms of variance. Okay. About, from yeah, the most the extreme websites for. and forums that exist? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've just uh, uh, okay, all right. So you just focused on the extremes <laughs> where you would get extremes. Um, that's right, yep. Have you factored in to your research and to your findings the fact that as the Prime Minister, the very office itself is going to attract more comment and more negativity than any other position in the land? Yes, of course. So you and factored that out? There was, there, was an, uh, there was a total expectation that as the executive, that person, individual, no matter who it is, is going to receive a lot more attention, a lot more vitriol as well as a lot more praise. All right. But the, so, but the, but the, thing, so, that was, but uh, yeah. the thing that was striking to us yeah. was for all of the other high-profile figures, many of whom were front and centre on TV yeah. pretty much every day during COVID, received up to about 400 posts over that period. The Prime Minister received 18,000 posts. Okay. But do we, do, we, do we know that was because she that. was a woman or because she was the Prime Minister? Well, we don't know. And ah, okay, I, we don't know. Uh, and so I think, um, you know, we can... We can make a few assumptions. Um, well, we shouldn't, my, should we? If you're a scientist, we shouldn't be making any assumptions. We should be testing well, we, and proving theories, shouldn't we, Chris? Yeah, well, there's a number of theories that a woman in power does elicit this type of vitriol. And well, I, I don't the, look to you yeah, for theories. I look for you as a scientist and an academic to prove those theories one way or the other. Yeah, well, um, the, what I was trying to do was provide some data, and this data demonstrates that there's an overwhelming focus on the Prime Minister. Who happens to be happens to be a woman in power happens to be happens to be uh, okay. Um, so really, 
this doesn't prove in any way that misogyny is abroad, even in the most extreme areas of the internet. It just proves that the Prime Minister is a person who is a focus for hate. Yeah, it, it does prove that, and I think there's very strong indications that misogyny was um, was involved. What indications are there that mis What are those strong indications? In terms um, the, of data, the, nat the, nat the nature of a lot of the posts. Okay, um, have you quantified that? How many of them were gender based, and how many of them weren't? So you asked about my methodology before, and I was um, about to explain okay, it to good, you. Okay, good. Go um, away. And, yeah, and you, yeah, cut anyway. you, you cut me off. I go. I'll let you do it now. I'll let you do it now. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I mean, just, just take a breath. Um, what we do is we run the data through a number of online tools that are able to identify whether the post is negative, involves aggression, is threatening, involves sexually explicit language, um, and the post that focused on the PM had a very, very high average of sexually explicit nature, which is often quite um, central to misogynistic language. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what proportion? You there? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, of the, we, we set a threshold, so we're talking about quite heinous content. Yep. Yep. We're not talking. We're not just talking about normal criticisms, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, of of the of all the posts that were focused on these seven individuals, ninety three percent of those that we found to be highly negative or toxic or um, sexually explicit were focused on the PM. Okay. And what proportion of the criticisms of the comments were negative? Did reach that threshold? So, out of eighteen thousand posts that mentioned the PM, five thousand of them were. Um, along those lines, met that threshold. Okay, so so little over twenty five percent, maybe twenty nine percent of comments about the prime minister met the threshold of being pretty heinous and sexist, or or, 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 or could be con construed as being yep. gender based. All right, what about for the others? What was the percentage of negative comments about other people that also had a sexual or a, a misogynistic content to them? It's actually a, it's actually a very similar proportion. Oh, okay. So the prime minister, so the prime minister, not subject to any greater misogyny, on the extreme websites and forums that you were looking at than any other individual. I think what we have to do is be careful because we are talking about much smaller numbers for these other high-profile figures. Yeah. So that that proportion. So when we when we get to talking about eighteen thousand posts focused on the PM. That average is much more meaningful for that average yeah. to to maintain. So, but um, okay, let's say throughout the, two, yeah, yeah. throughout the period. Yeah, I get that, you. I mean, that, that's far more meaningful, right? Okay, so what we've found is that the prime minister, and I'm just trying to review this because I think the way, and I'm not questioning your research and your data. That's what you do. You're an expert in your field. I'm I'm questioning the interpretation by oh, mainstream oh, media. Sorry, I'll, I'll oh, just jump in there. I'm yeah. I'm very happy for you to question my research. <laughs> okay. that doesn't bother me in the and slightest. I get the feeling that you are. That's why you came on, Chris, and I appreciate it. But what's the interpretation here? We're doing this in a a mainstream media narrative that somehow the Prime Minister, despite her explicit denial of this fact, was somehow hounded from office by misogynistic comments and hate. So I, so I don't know what you mean by a mainstream narrative because I'm a researcher, I, I'm, I'm not involved in the media, right? And I'm, yeah, I'm No, 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 your, I agree, but, but your, your research... Your platform, right? but your research... Okay, so, yeah, but, I agree. But your research yep. has been interpreted in main, what I would call legacy or mainstream media and has been highlighted in a number of posts and is being used to support comments by others not based on your research to create an impression for the public which it would appear from, from the interactions I've had through a very small media channel being the platform that may not be truthful. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I, okay, so... First of all, I'll say I, I've been very careful to not put words into the Prime Minister's mouth. Yeah, about and, why and you have, and, and, and of course what, I recognise so, that. So that's, that's up to her to, to say that. Mm. What I would say, though, um, if I was in that position and I was, I was facing that barrage of consistently um, high numbers of very negative posts, then I, it would wear me down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but what I would, what, what my whole goal the whole way has been to inject some data and some evidence into this debate because and, and discussion because there's a lot of 
um, commentators in this field who make a number of points, but they don't back it up with evidence. Yeah, well said. Now, I, I, I wanted to investigate the data, one form of data, right? So I'm yeah. looking at dark websites. Not, yeah. not, you know, there's lots of other forms that we could yeah. look at. I just think New Zealand needs some data on this. So okay. I, I looked at these dark forms, and I was expecting the PM, because she's the PM, because she's a, um, a woman in power, to receive a higher proportion yeah, of posts. So what, what, I wasn't ex- what I wasn't expecting was that it was going to be a, um, by a factor of 50 to 90 times yeah. more than other high-profile yeah. individuals. Yeah, I, and I think it's interesting that you have revealed just how much focus there is, geez, in a non-presidential electoral system, on the person who fronts, who is front of house for a, a particular political party or a particular administration. I do think that is remarkable. It shows how much we focus on the individual or on the shop front of politics, may, maybe uh, at the expense of, of focusing on policy or the overall shape of a, a cabinet or, or caucus. I'd also add, though, Chris, this question. You, you admit that this was looking at the dark web and uh, looking at places of on the internet to be honest, that I personally have never been to and would never go to because I've always had this suspicion that they are as toxic and nasty as your research uh, has revealed. How many New Zealanders, how many internet users do occupy these places, do go to these places? That's the other question I've got because then I can put... And I'm not saying the importance. I can look at the emphasis of, of, of these headlines that I read in mainstream media and say... You know, if it's only 1% of the population that go there, it's not really such a big deal and it can't then therefore be extrapolated out into the general attitudes of the rest of the population. Okay, but um, even if it is very a very small percentage of the New Zealand population, it is still part of this context in which people's views a are... Tiny part, a tiny it, part it, of this it, context, No, no, but, Chris. But, 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 every, but the most extreme end of any type of phenomenon is an, is an, is an extreme part, right? It's a, is a tiny part. Yeah. And so what this does is this, this is the extreme end of this, this discourse. And what it does is it flows on to Facebook and other things that does it? Are more, more main, is more mainstream. Yes, it does. does I mean, it, where does your research book. show that it does? Um, well, I think, no, anecdotally, I, I, I'm yeah, not Yeah, but anecdotally, is an, it, but and that's your reckon, Chris. And, and I, no, I've no, got no, respect no. for your research. I'm just saying, hang, if it's this no, tiny we'll place, finish, dark finish, place where well, most of us don't go, finish. where's its relevance? I, okay, so it, we don't, you know, we don't go there. The PM certainly doesn't sit there reading through it and reading those comments, which, you know, a lot of people have been criticising me, saying, well, the PM doesn't read it, so it doesn't matter. But it does matter because we've seen... Offline action. Eight people have, have gone into court for making death threats against the PM. There is a really close connection. You know, a lot of research has shown there's a really close connection between a sea of rhetoric that's that's vile and 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 abusive and threatening, and leads to some people, not, not you know, a small proportion again, that go off and decide to do something in the real world. We you know we see political violence all the time. So these things are connected. It flows on to more mainstream rhetoric. But it's it a drop in the ocean. Action. And the vast majority of New Zealanders are reasonable people who enjoy well, exercising their freedom of speech, sometimes in robust discussions. What I'm saying is you have taken the dark corner of the web and, and it's not your fault, but you live in a context where mainstream media have painted this and written headlines to make us think this is a widespread phenomenon and it quite no, simply no, isn't. I don't think anybody's... Well, it is widespread when you're talking about 18,000 posts compared to other people getting 400. Oh, that's nothing. The, the we, we, you know, I did an interview with Winston Peters the other day. It's had 80,000 views. So I'm sorry, 18,000 yeah. posts in the context of, you know, the, the global internet is nothing. No, no, it's not nothing. I mean, this is... And also... This is from, a, you know, five websites. But the, the point of the study was to compare it to other figures. Five websites used by how many, accessed by that's, how many New Zealanders? One, that's, one, that's one data point. And a similar, I'm, I'm assuming, if other people would actually do some sort of rigorous study like this, I'm assuming similar sort of things are playing out in other platforms and other forms of media, and they are playing out in... Uh, offline rhetoric and the things that people, the posters that yeah. people hold up, yeah. hold up the you know the abuse that people give to the PM and other women and, and other people on, you know it's we are moving. It, it's part of the process of moving New Zealand towards a more kind of tribalistic politics.
which I don't think any of us really want. No, so I, 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 I agree with you 100% on that, Chris. But, I'd agree with you yeah. 100% on that. But the problem is, you know, we've got to have a, 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 an honest and sometimes robust bus political debate. And I'm not sure that screaming, well, misogynist now is the, is the, the, the left's um, criticism of the day. It used to be racist. Uh, I think you have uncovered a dark and unsavoury corner of the internet and you've shown just how extreme that can be but I'm just not sure that I buy that your research can be extrapolated to the country in general. Well, I think, you know, as I've tried to explain, I think you're looking at it in the, in the wrong way. I'm not saying that this is representative of a large proportion of New Zealand. What I'm saying right. is this is one manifestation of it, the most extreme manifestation of it, and there are other manifestations of it which aren't quite as abusive, but it, it does have an effect and it is representative of yeah. the abuse that the PM receives compared to yeah. other people. Yeah, well, what do you think, and we're, we're publishing a column today uh, by a guy called Graham Adams, and he looks back at some other extreme abuse. He looks back at Nick Smith, the then Minister, I think, for the Environment or Conversation, uh, Conservation, and the fact that a... Uh, a 20 foot high um, sculpture of him uh, semi naked going doing number twos was created and left in a public place and covered by news media all over New Zealand and the world. That's a pretty abusive thing to do to someone, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, hope, I hope that this guy, um, the Graham, his article looks at a much wider range of, of data and, you know, has many more data points and, co and compares that abuse to the abuse that other people were getting because yeah. that's what we need. Like, I'm trying to yeah. move away. I'm trying to get us to move away from somebody on the left goes, oh, look at this terrible thing that the, somebody said about the PM. And everybody on the left says, yes, that's horrific. Oh, the, the right is terrible. And then somebody on the right says, oh, yeah, but what about that time somebody threw it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yep. like, and so, you know, I think... As a country, we need to get a little bit more mature and move on, move on from that kind of that kind of debate and think about things systematically and also see this. What I believe is, that I'm not. So I'm an academic, right? I'm not a. Yeah. You know, everybody. You know, many of your listeners and many much of the abuse that I'm getting on Twitter now is that I'm a. I should be defunded because I'm part of that and I'm I'm a leftist well, you or whatever. You're not getting funded but, by anyone but, in particular. You're an academic working no, no, at a university, just, right? But. but, but um, let me let me finish. Is that what I what I'm what I think we need is for this to become a bipartisan concern. I, I think that people on the right need to go, you know what, I don't care that Vern is on the left. If she's receiving this amount of abuse as an individual public figure, then we should all join together to oppose that. Not not use it as a as a form of political weapon to, to take down the other side. I think if we want to move forward as a country, we need to unite against this. You know that kind of abuse doesn't matter whether it's left or right. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. Doesn't matter. You know, I, I just think we should all oppose that. We can, like you say, we can. But I don't think we should personalise it in this way. Yeah, and I would agree with you, Chris. Um, I would agree with you. I, I, I personally think that in some ways your research has been misappropriated by some of my colleagues in mainstream media to support a narrative that perpetuates the division and the polarisation that exists in our political discourse today. But I, I, having talked to you, I thank you once again for explaining how your research worked and, and what you found, and that gives me a new perspective and informs me more greatly on these issues. So I thank you very much indeed for your work and for talking to us today. Great. Yeah, thanks for that, John. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. That is Chris Wilson. He is a uh, senior lecturer in politics, uh, international relations at Auckland University. So what Chris did was, in the headline you're reading, nine out of every 10 hateful posts and survey target PM. Nine out of every 10 hateful posts in a survey of the most extreme dark places on the internet target the Prime Minister. And a third of those hateful posts would appear to have gender bias or misogyny in them. That doesn't mean this is a misogynistic country. It doesn't mean the Prime Minister was hounded by office from people being mean to her on the internet. And, you know, thank you, Chris, for coming in.